Welcome back and thank you for staying with us on the conversation. And just like we said earlier, we're going to be discussing about the healthcare system in Nigeria and the challenges that it is facing and what are the next steps to actually do. And like I said earlier, we'll be joined by Dr. Anthony Aduro. He is a healthcare professional uh, joining us in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us at this time, uh, Dr. Aduro. Thank you so much for work. I mean, for bringing me back to this uh, humble station and then at least to give a little bit of my view on what's going on here. It's a pleasure system. to have you. Thank you. All right, so let's begin uh, with your own, uh, you know, expert's opinion. And that's talking about, uh, let's start with infrastructure and also funding because that is actually the main challenge when it comes to healthcare, you know, uh, from speaking to so many healthcare professionals. Now, uh, but according to the uh, Budget Office of the Federation, Nigeria's healthcare budget for 2024 is approximately 4.6% of the total budget. Now, I'd like for you to tell us, in your expert's opinion, is this percentage sufficient to address the country's healthcare challenges? in 2024, in one year. Yeah, yeah. One thing, uh, thank you so much for bringing that uh, figure out. One thing you have to know about Nigeria is that you just taking into consideration the population of Nigeria, we're over 250 million people, uh, this and growing. And when you look at the kind of allocation they're putting into it, and uh, that is really, really very significant to other allocations they're giving to other resources in Nigeria. Healthcare is a primary thing. When the system is not healthy, the, uh, the economy will not be healthy, the country will not be healthy. And then I think there should be more focus on how to improve the healthcare system by allocating more resources than what is currently being done. Because as a result of what is allocated, I think that is why we have not enough to actually take care of what is going on in the country. And this is the reason why we're bringing this to the fore, so that at least, you know, uh, uh, stakeholders will be in charge of what is facing the uh, healthcare system and they'll be able to do something about it. Now, let's talk about a figure also from the WHO that actually said that Nigeria has only 0.5 hospital beds per 1,000 people compared to, you know, a global average, average of 2.7. Now, how does this impact healthcare delivery? Uh, that is just the result of what you are saying today. Because mm. when you see what, how many beds are per people, or what number of pra practitioner, or yeah, like a pra practitioner to people that are there, that is where you see that when these things are not well allocated, Nigeria has a very, very significant. A problem with uh, migration of maybe medical practitioner or healthcare professionals and other people that are going out of the country. Why? Because the resources, the, uh, the, the, the manpower is there, but the resources and uh, whatever they allocate is for... Is the manpower uh, there? Manpower the is drain? there. The manpower is just drain. We're just draining them out. The manpower is there, but when the resources are not there for this, um, you know, like to... Uh, Potentially, I mean, to use the manpower to the fullest potential, then you see a migration. Doctors and all the professionals, nurses and everybody, they will migrate to a greener pasture. If you get to a hospital where, okay, you have a good doctor, you have a good nurses, you've got all those people, and then apart from that, you have all these practitioners, various aspects of the healthcare system that are there, but there is not a single, single infrastructure for them to practice or to do something, what are they going to do? Nothing. They're not going to use pen and paper to do anything. They use equipment. They, use, they need equipment. They need good structure. They need good uh, facilities. They need uh, all those things to be able to practice, to even to be able to get to that, I mean, to maximize the potential of uh, manpower. Okay. If not, if they're not there, people will start migrating. Now, speaking of resources, uh, you know, you did talk about how uh, the government needs to do a lot about uh, health care. Very, it's very, very important. And from what we have heard, you know, time, uh, from time immemorial, uh, when you talk about, uh, you know, improving some of these sectors uh, in the country, it's lack of money, lack of funding, and the rest. But then, what approach would you recommend, you know, uh, to improve healthcare infrastructure, considering the country's limited resources? Yeah, we, we, we can say lack of money, lack of everything, because I, I would say, if you don't invest in your system, in your nation, the na nation will become a sick nation. And uh, when you look at the system right now, you can see the private sector 
kind of a little bit growing. If you go to the public hospitals or maybe general hospitals, where uh, the way I would call it general hospitals, you see you maybe you make your consultation. They are all over everywhere, every every part of the country, but there's not a single thing that you can see. I saw I was talking the other day where you see uh, two or three two people in the same bed sharing a bed at the hospital delivering a baby. That's not what you but you get to a, a public hospital or the general hospital, then the hospital the doctors or the practitioners you see, they have to refer you back to, they'll give you everything they'll attend to you and then they'll have to eventually refer you where you'll be able to get expert team, where you, they'll refer you to a private practitioner. A private practitioner now are able to invest little or the mega amount of money they have into the system. Okay, into the system, yeah. The, the, the private practitioner, they are able to invest a little bit in, into the system that they are able to at least meet a little bit of the needs of the people, mm. way, which is way, way more, more than the public hospitals or the, 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 the general hospitals. Yeah. But how many people in Nigeria are able to go to the private clinics or private hospitals to take care of themselves? Well, we'll definitely talk about, come back to, you know, uh, the brain drain and private sector because yeah. uh, from the figure I have, uh, private healthcare providers actually account for 60% yeah. of healthcare services in Nigeria and that's yeah. way more than more. the public yeah. sector. Yes. And if you ask me, it is actually a shame. That is, is more than a shame because uh, you have to think about, the, you, when you grow people, you grow from ground to up exactly. or something like you're not growing from up to ground. It, it, it's, that, that's the other way. It's, it's a wrong way of growing our economy, wrong way of growing our people, wrong way of actually helping the people in the nation. How many people, only maybe maybe point, maybe maybe less than 0.5 percent of Nigeria are well to do, mm -hmm. well, well to do, are in the upper class. The middle class account for more than 80 percent of the people. Middle and the lower class account, oh, yeah, account for more than 85 percent or 90 percent of the population. Then when this mega amount, how much is the salary you're paying people, and then when you get to a hospital, for you to get a preventative care, a good care, mm. you are going to talk about certain amount of money that is way more than minimum wage. Uh, speaking of salaries and yeah. speaking of, you know, classes and yeah. going to the hospital, uh, the NHIS, let's uh, touch on it a bit. Now, uh, the current statistics actually indicate uh, less than 5% of Nigerians being enrolled in NHIS. And if you ask me, most of them are actually salary earners, you yeah, know. Yeah. It's all thanks, you know, that, to yeah. their jobs and all that. While 70% still finance their health care independently. Now, what are the main barriers, you know, in increasing enrollment? Or is it just, you know, the NHIS, is it just meant for uh, workers? Yeah. You, uh, thank you for bringing that, uh, that out. Look at the NHI, okay, the enrollment, how many, let's look at the population, how many people in the nation are fully employed, mm -hmm. gainfully employed. Most people are either peasant farmer or maybe market women or men or sellers and all those kind of things. Let's see the percentage of people you enroll, how you, you can, uh, extrapolate the number of uh, enrollment vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the people that are gainfully employed. When the percentage of people who are gainfully employed is less than 10% mm. or 10% uh, of the population, then where do you, how do you take care of the 80% of the population? They have to extend it into a, in such a way. NHR is a good and positive way to do, but how many of the private hospitals accept the NHI? You still go back to the public hospital where you have no so, infrastructure. So you're saying it's yeah. not as effective yeah, as, as it ought to be. The, the, there should be a regulatory kind of system that will make it okay. If it's acceptable in the general hospital, the private hospital also should accept the same thing. So I don't want to bring down the, the efforts of the private hospitals or private clinics or private health centers. But you have to make it in such a way that it's also more, you know, like in a, a, a way whereby they'll be able to actually the resources they're putting into all those structures and infrastructures they're putting in the hospital, they should be able to get it back. Because when you look at what government is going to pay back for us, maybe for your health care or yeah. for those uh, something, it might not be able to you know, sustain the private hospitals and that's why they might kind of a little bit run away from it. And the population of people that are enrolled 
compared to the population of the it's, nation, yeah. you have to see that yeah. it's not just something that is there. Okay. So they have to go devise a means whereby even like uh, not just the employed, maybe there's a way people can actually opt in. You know, privately, you can opt in whether you are employed wow. or you're not employed or you're, you're a business person, you're doing something, you're a market woman or man and all those kind of things, you'll be able to enroll in the healthcare. Then we'll have a large pool of people. Then contribution will be bigger and then they'll be able to reimburse the private sector or the maybe the general hospitals, I mean, the general, yeah, hospitals, so that you'll be able to actually make, make it a more sustainable kind of, something for them yeah uh, now dr aduro let's now come back to you know uh, human resource uh, gaps yeah. you know we're talking about brain drain and the rest uh, uh, how can the government retain healthcare professionals you know considering this brain drain and also migration to other countries because as it stands nigeria has a shortage of approximately fifteen thousand uh doctors and that is according to the uh, nigerian medical association yes well, Nigeria will continue to have that as long as the resources are not there to, you know, like to make the best use of their brains and everything. You will want to go to medical school or maybe head, you'll become a healthcare professional or this or what, whichever area mm -hmm. you want to fully utilize your talent. You want to fully service people. But when, even if you get to a hospital, you're extra technician and then there's no extra in the hospital so what are you going to do you're yeah, going to no, go to a, no yeah there's, there's no, no infra infrastructure there's, there's no, no equipment and others kind of no laboratory then what are you going to do you're not going to just sit down there then you're doing nothing it's a disservice that is why you're seeing the migration or, or brain drain but, but even mm -hmm. as it is when it comes to the migration i think uh you know there's some complaints from uh doctors and nurses recently that the government is making it difficult for them to uh travel abroad um I'll I just tell you, maybe uh, it's like they'll tell you, bring it on or something like that. <laughs> People want to go out, to go out. They always they fully you. get Yeah, they fully get good employment. Uh, that's what you just see. When Nigerian, you see, you go, come outside, come to the, I'm based in the United States, come to the United States, you see the top doctors are Nigerian. Top, you know, like may, whatever practitioner, whichever area of the healthcare you are, you, before you count two, you see one Nigeria. Before you count three, you see one Nigeria there. And all the people that are coming from home also to take care of themselves. Also because those resources are not here, you see our leaders and everybody, they saw that these things are not here. They are sick or they, some, I want everybody to get the best. You want, I want everybody to get the best medical care or something like that. You go out there, you find out that the person treating you, the person attending to you or the person taking care of you is a Nigerian. Mm. Why are they there? It's because we don't have those resources in our facilities in Nigeria. We don't have them. But if the economy, the system or the government can actually partner with the private sector and create a very meaningful healthcare system, healthcare, you know, like a, a, yeah, yeah, delivery system that will actually serve, support the growth of the nation, that will support the, you know, like the, the, the empowerment of the doctors, nurses, and, and all the healthcare professionals that are there, the people will, will actually stay. You're not, you can't force people not, I mean, to stay. They will always go. And it's not like you tag somebody that is going to stay in here. People will go. They get employment. They get, they get to go there. Uh, but right. if, yeah. Well, well, not minding the challenges, you know, that are facing the healthcare sector, whether the doctors uh, or healthcare practitioners leave or stay. Now, let's make do with, you know, what we have obtainable in the country now. And I'm talking about a full healthcare experience. It is also important for patients to actually have that. Now, how do you ensure patient centered care? in Nigerian healthcare system with the little uh, means that we actually have, especially the need for, you know, healthcare practitioners to prioritize patient satisfaction and experience. The facility we have, the resources we have, the infrastructure we have cannot sustain a good patient center care. You want to provide, you want an outcome, best outcome for every every uh, patient you want to take care of. But when you don't have resources, well, I mean, what? For example, the 0.5 yeah. bed yeah, beds, to 1,000 yeah. patients. Yeah, went to a couple of hospitals, doctors. then I'm seeing two people, two women delivering on the same bed. Hmm. 
Yeah. So oh. I mean that that is just a, a kind of some it's is and it's just a people that are working there are just trying to take the maximum use of what it's not that they just want to put the two of them there, but when there are nothing to it's it's like uh, <laughs> better something than nothing. Yeah, you can't put somebody on the floor and all this guy. It's 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 uh it's a situation we call we we'll probably say appalling, but it's all they could do. It's not in all hospitals, it's not in all there are private hospitals that are well maintained and well something. Why don't we? Why don't government partner with them? I don't know how. If the resources are put in the a public sector, if it's not working, then you have to join the private. You have to merge the private public sector together so that they can just work hand in hand. And then, even if instead of you know, like referring well, this person, let's also forget yeah. that yeah. most of these uh, private hospitals actually yeah. have personal stakes, yeah. you know, uh, in these hospitals. Yeah. So most of the elites, yeah, and most of those running the country have personal stakes See. in these private hospitals. Thank you. Now you are hitting the nail on the head because. Uh, those people that really are there, they have personal stake. It's not just because of that, because when they saw that this thing is not working in the public sector, why don't you put it in the private, private sector? How many people will be able to affect? I mean, I have, to, I have to really thank them, encourage them to do it, because even if they're trying, maybe when we have more, the competition, I mean, we have more hospitals, more you know, uh, healthcare centers or all this kind of a thing, maybe prices will come down and then... Uh, yeah, yeah when you talked about healthcare centers. We yeah. actually have so many healthcare centers yeah. Yeah. which are supposed to be, you know, the go-to uh, centers yeah. for uh, people yeah. in their community yeah. when they have one issue or the other. But most of them are just, you know, a shadow of themselves. Some of them are just buildings. Yeah. You know, some of them have nothing except beds and some of them are not even functioning. And these primary health care centers are meant to be first, first point of contact yeah. for 80% of Nigerians, which would have done a lot if they were functioning effectively. Now, can these, how can these centers be strengthened? And also, especially, I'm talking about those in the rural areas, yeah. you know, commu with community-based yeah. initiatives. That is where in uh, health care, we say preventative medicine is more cheaper, way cheaper than curative medicine. You can't just compare the two of them. If you create health centers, you well they're well equipped and then it's way more cheaper to create a system whereby you develop a preventative method even at the minimum, at the mega level, which is more cheaper than when somebody, like somebody, even before you get a, let's say, maybe typhoid fever or something like that, or be, if at the healthcare centers, various centers, if they are at some point, maybe at certain interval, maybe every three months, every two months, we have a community-wide kind of uh, outreach. medical outreach where you out actually give the, you know, like the, the people some kind of preventative care, and those, which is relatively cheaper, is way more better than when you're trying to Cure yeah. a malaria or something. Especially yeah, when yeah. it comes to yeah. probably an endemic. Yeah. Yes, like when yeah. monkeypox or something. Monkeypox yeah. or it doesn't really have any any form, any form of you know disease or something like that. When you are at the preventative level, you are able to manage effectively the preventative level, and there's no better way to do it than healthcare centers in all over the places. Equip them, just invest in them. The government should invest when if investment is not there, you are going to Okay, the government will not eventually invest in your healthcare or me, my healthcare when, let's but, say. But they would. The government would actually tell you that they have invested a lot in healthcare, even though it might not be enough. You know, and I'm speaking of uh, the primary healthcare revitalization yeah. program. Okay, you know, would you say that that has had uh, any outcome at all? Uh, I, I don't see any outcome. You have to create a benchmark. This is what you want to achieve. And so, when there's no benchmark or something, you can't just throw things out there. You say, oh, yeah. Yeah, we are getting this thing out and then eventually there's not even report or anything that is showing us oh you are meeting this benchmark you are getting to a situation whereby oh this is the report from oh this area this rural areas you want to look at the uh, uh, the result you're getting before you can say you're actually being successful in what whatever you're doing it's not there those benchmarks are not laid 
uh, they just throw things out there, whether it get to the people or not, there is no act actually report or anything that is going to tell you that, oh, this is what we have done, this is where we have gone, this is where. That is why maybe the other first world or other nations are more. Little bit. They'll throw things out there and then they want the result, and this result are made public, everybody will say, yeah, in this area, this is what we have done. It's not that they're not trying. I'll just tell you that one that maybe they're trying, they are trying, but, but I mean, the implementation is really very, very, maybe that wrong. That has always or not, been yeah, a, problem. It's a, it's a problem. Yeah, yeah. Mm. All right, you know, we talked about, you know, the ratio of uh, bed to patient yeah. and patient to bed and also patient to doctor. So what is the ideal number of uh, bed to patient and uh, what do you call it, uh, doctor to patient? Patient. Ratio? Uh, uh, you want to see the you see the, the nation's population like we're talking before we're well over 250 million people yes. yeah so when we're serving people you where by most uh, like let's say 80 percent of these people are actually very low low or middle income people low or middle income people where in that within that low or income people you want to see how many people we can serve but averagely i will just tell you you nigeria has gone beyond certain age where we, you uh, be, beyond certain uh, stage where we cannot say yes let's compare ourselves to this let's say sweden or to UK or to even mere Malaysia and all those kind of things, you see, and Pakistan. Even when you look at that, you want to actually make yourself more comparable to a similar, similar population. It's not like maybe, okay, I would say maybe one physician to maybe 1,000 people is a big. It's a it's big, a it's a large number to some people. So, so, so what well, is ideal? One the, uh, physician to how many uh, Yeah, uh, if, it's, if you want to make it ideal, if you have infrastructure and everything, yeah. it should not be more than 500 people or something like that. One physician to 500, yeah, isn't five, that too much it's, as well? It's too much, but we're a developing nation. You cannot, imp you cannot put all the resources <laughs> there. And <laughs> when we're going there, you have to start seeing if you're starting because when you are dealing with 500 or 1000 people there's oh, a I'm disparity thinking one the, physician to five to people. five people it's no wait <laughs> we, we, i'll get to that point I'll, I'll tell you why i'm saying 500 okay. it's because of the resources we have and then the 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 capacity of the people to actually pay for you to sustain for you if somebody is earning 30000 or 40000 naira and then you want to sustain, a, let's say a doctor, a physician, who's supposed to be earning maybe 800,000 Naira or something or so. You will need more than 500 of people that will pay maybe about maybe 5,000 Naira to actually be able to sustain one. That is why I was going there. If anything at all, if government is giving a subsidy and everything to that, we are not supposed to be more than maybe 250 to average, you know, like sustainably, kind of something like that, 200 to a physician. And then the bed should be one The to bed one? supposed to be one to one, okay. regardless of Obviously. anything, regardless of anything. All yeah. right, now, mm -hmm. earlier we touched a bit on the private sector's participation, and right now uh, what we have obtainable in the private sector is, you know, uh, private hospitals tending to uh, private patients who actually have the money and can afford them. But how can we, you know, ensure that these private sectors or uh, these private hospitals tend to the public or prioritizes public health interests as well? Thank you. One thing I'll just tell from experience is that uh, as a healthcare professional, you know, healthcare is something that is really a, a benefit of the nation. I saw a couple of things where maybe doctors or something like that will not treat somebody without putting something down. Exactly. It's a very, very wrong approach to, uh, you know, like to healthcare delivery system. I think government should step into that. They, they, they should have, look and into them, that. But yeah. they, don't they will Most not listen, listen because sometimes they'll say the the management want A, B, C, D, yeah. or this and that. Still, we have to put a regulatory system in place. I, I, I'm not against 
private, you know, like private practice. Yeah. It's probably where you can develop the nation because the, we, 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 the, the system have to actually compete with you to be able to meet well, at par. Well, you can also yeah. have some of these uh, doctors, yeah. you know, switch. You yeah. know, they go to private hospitals today, and, and the same day uh, they still that, practice in, uh, in public, public hospitals. That's well. what I told you before. You meet a, a doctor at the public hospital, and then it's going to give you everything, attend to you, and then they'll give you a referral to their own hospital, <laughs> a private, a private. That's where you're going to get. Because one thing from here, okay, there are no resources at the public hospitals or public uh, se uh, sector healthcare system. Not enough infrastructure for you to, you know, like maybe you want to even do a dialysis to go to one of these. You can't get, yeah. they have to refer you to somewhere else where you be able to get a better something. But still, re regardless of anything, anything, that, that point I saw where I saw it in movies, I saw it live and everything that the uh, doctor will, it's not, uh, it's not a place of, it's actually against the ethics yeah. for them so, to so be able to the say that. Yeah. To save lives yeah. first and ask for questions life first later. And ask later, something like that. Uh, I know maybe a lot of, you know, like uh, the, the, the hospital might be, the system might be overwhelmed. It might actually get into a situation where they have nothing again, and then there's no more money reimbursed to them. But it, it, it's a way of finding a balance there whereby, okay, People will come, you're going to do that, but maybe there will be a way that the government will intervene. Not, you are not going to just force them that, okay, you're not going to do this one. They, okay, they'll say, if they say they're not going to do all, they're not going to treat people, there's not, you can't force them because maybe you're at Abuja, I'm at Lagos, I'm somewhere, and then this thing is happening, and then you go in Bado or so. And then somebody will come to the hospital, and if somebody says, I'm not going to treat you because I'm not going to get money or something like that. That is where they are. But money is not supposed or, to be or, the priority. Or even when they yeah. decide to, you know, treat yeah. you, they yeah. keep you if you don't pay. Pay, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's so inhuman, inhuman. It's an inhuman kind of, kind of uh, healthcare delivery oh, system. Oh, oh, okay, mm. Dr. Aduruno, just before we wrap up quickly, what message would you like to convey to policymakers and stakeholders regarding healthcare reform? Well, the best thing I can just put in is to let us look and the best way to partner with lady policymakers or maybe our leaders looking to the best way to partner with the, head, the private sector, either in such a way that maybe, let's say, there is an incentive going to private sector so as to help de develop the public sector, or in such a way that maybe if somebody, let's say somebody comes in now, mm -hmm. in, rather than for them to condemn or leave you that they're not going to do something or they're going to do something for bona fide or, or free of charge, let there be a way that government will subsidize that treatment, whether they're in NHI or not. Mm -hmm. That is why the pool of NHI have to be extended to the public, to everybody. Even if you are a street worker, if you can pay certain things mm. to, you get health insurance policy. That policy will help us develop because all, all the hospitals, they will know that they will be able to get whatever little, because they need also money to put back what they have, you know, like put in place for, okay. you know, for, for, you know, like as our resources, whatever they're using for yeah. at the hospital okay. and everything equipment and all those, those things have to re re replenish, it has, it has to be uh, uh, modernized and all this kind of a thing, in, or your yeah, infrastructure rather. Okay. Yeah. All right, sadly, we actually have to wrap up. But thank you so much, uh, Dr. Anthony Aduro, for uh, joining us on the conversation today and speaking to us on this. Thank you so much for bringing this thing. I hope we have a bigger time, better time in future to actually put uh, this thing course. in place. Thank you so much. Of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs>